Hey, I'm Leo Ash, and my goal in the next 12 minutes is to convince you that the Mexican border wall is a lot like the Kardashians. A small minority of people are obsessed with it, but objectively it's stupid, unimportant, and irredeemably tied to a dumbass. So let's get to it. This is the progressive argument for immigration. to America is a long, expensive, and tedious process, which is why most poors need not apply. Those who come to America legally fit into four categories, family-sponsored, employment-based, refugees, and then everyone else. At 68%, the largest group of immigrants coming here is through family or marriage. After that are those coming here to work or as refugees. Keep in mind that the United States has annual limits on how many immigrants can come from each of these categories, as well as limits on how many people can come from each country. Now, what Trump calls chain migration is merely the legal use of the immigration system to bring your family here, like he did with his wife. That said, obviously every system is open to a certain level of abuse, and there are some problems, mostly coming from employers using the system to exploit cheap labor, si supiera cómo sus gente que tiene adentro con papeles nos trata tan mal a nosotros. But despite the anecdotal evidence that you hear on Fox News, our immigration system is not being widely abused. But more on that later. Moving on to undocumented immigrants. The number currently living in America is around 11.3 million. So altogether, legal immigrants make up roughly 14% of the total U.S. population, while undocumented immigrants are a mere 3%. And finally, let's talk about the refugee system. Now, a refugee is someone who flees their country out of reasonable fear of persecution due to their race, nationality, religion, political views, or social group. And FYI, old white people, refugees can legally apply for asylum status under U.S. and international law, including people already here or at the border. But don't shit your pants yet, because refugees must go through the most thorough vetting process ever. Oh, you don't believe me? I think they want some examples, Pierce. Okay, let's give them some examples. Troy, drop a beat. Just give him some examples. Check it. Here's the rigorous four-step process. First, you have to register, interview, and get screened by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. And of those who pass that stage, less than 1% immigrate to America. So if you're one of those secret refugee terrorists that keeps Tucker Carlson's wife up at night, since you know Tucker Carlson isn't, boom! <laughs> If you are one of those secret refugee terrorists wanting to infiltrate America with absolutely no history of crime or connections to terrorism, you're still over 99% more likely to be settled somewhere else. And because we're America, America fuck yeah. we get to pick the best immigrant draft pick candidates every year, like we're the Yankees. And white people used to be all about drafting colored people from other countries. <laughs> Anyway, those less than 1% who do come to America are still on average 18 to 24 months away from getting here because now they have to go through biometric screenings and an intense interview process by all of these agencies separately. The National Counterterrorism Center, the FBI Terrorist Screening Center, the Department of Homeland Security, the State Department, USCIS, and lastly, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection National Targeting Center. Now, if they pass all of these checks, which, by the way, are even more intense for people coming from countries like Iraq and Syria, they must then pass a thorough medical screening. Because if a disease is going to get into America, it's going to be homegrown, damn it. <laughs> and finally, they go through cultural orientation, which I assume is simply watching the Disney or Pixar movie that best corresponds with your race. Though, they probably leave the best for black people, who maybe get to watch Song of the South, a gem from 1946 that Disney wished we'd forgotten, featuring an old black slave named Uncle Remus, singing about how his life couldn't get any better as a slave on Massa's plantation. 
You know, just a classic slave song about having no worries. Anyway, back on topic. Upon successfully immigrating to America, working age refugees are expected to find a job within six months to prove that they won't be a financial burden. And jokes aside for a moment, before moving on to the border wall, any discussion of immigration should also acknowledge that much of the violence and persecution that refugees are fleeing across the world, particularly in Central America, South America, and the Middle East, was at best partially caused by American foreign policy. Okay, background done. Background done! Now let's talk about why the border wall is about as dumb as a homeschool kid from Alabama. The Republican obsession with constructing a border wall across the entire 2,000 mile Mexican border is literally insane. First off, ever wonder why Texas has such an odd shape? It's because much of the border is located on the Rio Grande River. Cutting through mountains, rivers, villages, and even people's homes. As a result, we would have to build the actual wall well within American borders, sometimes miles, which makes the land on the other side useless and Mexican? Aye, aye, aye. Now, in addition to this being stupid and damaging to the environment, 33% of the border is on Native American tribal land, and 66% of the border is privately owned. So the American government would have to use what's called eminent domain to force those people off their land. This would cause us to be tied up in lawsuits for years. And no matter what, taxpayers would have to pay untold millions in legal fees and in compensation to those property owners who get paid based on the value of their land, buildings, and a bunch of other stuff, including relocation costs. So it's not surprising why every single US representative who represents a border community is against the wall. But we haven't even gotten to the best part. According to Trump's own Office of Management and Budget, the actual cost just to build the fucking thing is roughly $60 billion. For the record, that's 2.7 times the estimate by Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. And I can't even compare the number to Trump because he's changed his budget numbers more than he's changed wives. Let's say it costs four or five billion. So if the wall costs $6 billion to build, you mean to tell me I can't take $7 billion and build a wall? The wall's probably $8 billion. The wall is 10 to 12 billion. I think for $18 billion or less, we're gonna have a great wall. And we're talking about a wall for 20 billion. And they did agree to a $25 billion wall. Democrats, by the way, estimated the cost to be 70 billion. But that may even be conservative, because according to the Cato Institute, a prominent libertarian think tank, due to typical construction cost overruns, you know, the type that are common when dealing with the Rio Grande and lawsuits, the border wall cost is likely to rise two to 3.3 times the original estimate, which puts it somewhere between 120 to $200 billion. To put that in context, 200 billion would pay for the entire annual US budget for policing, incarcerations, and NASA combined. And that doesn't even count the 1 billion or more we'll need to spend every year, forever, just to maintain the wall. Now, keep in mind, with 1 billion dollars, you could easily buy all of Trump's assets and still have millions of rubles left over. Oh! But in addition to the wall being stupidly expensive, the large majority of undocumented immigrants don't even come from across the border. They come from planes and boats using a visa. In fact, since 2008, more undocumented immigrants have arrived by visa overstays than by the Mexican border, a pattern that has only increased over the years. Now, if you strictly use government data, the percentage of visa overstays versus border crossings is currently roughly 90% to 10. But I tried to confirm those numbers with the Nonpartisan Center for Migration Studies. And after speaking with Robert Warren, one of the foremost experts on this topic, he said that the DHS numbers were inflated. And in reality, visa overstays account for roughly 67% or two thirds of undocumented immigrants which is still the large majority. 
And keep in mind, this can always shift even more. Or as Trump aptly put it, If there's a concrete wall in front of you, go through it, go over it, go around it, but get to the other side of that wall. Which brings us to the final problem. You forgot about tunnels, dumbass! Mr. Trump was told some border crossers have been digging tunnels under areas where walls are already in place. This is a tunnel. This is the second tunnel that recently that we have located. This is an area that we actually have wall. Tunnel drug smuggling was actually pioneered back in 1989 by El Chapo, the most infamous drug trafficker in modern history. And the sophistication of these tunnels has only grown. In 2016, we found a tunnel that ran more than half a mile from Tijuana all the way to San Diego and was equipped with ventilation, rails, and electricity. In total, 224 tunnels have been found around the Mexican border since 1990. And while the border wall only goes six feet deep, tunnels can go as deep as 70 feet. Now, you may be tempted to blame this whole border wall clusterfuck on Trump, but he's just a symptom of the rhetoric that Republicans have been spewing for decades. And that's what I'll be covering in my next episode on the top five Republican bullshit talking points on immigration. But until then, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below on what subject I should cover next, and share this video with the hashtag AlwaysAngry. This has been part one of the Progressive Argument for Immigration. I'm Leo Ash. Stay angry.